Welcome everybody to Grease Chats, your host Tony Cariotis. In today's episode, we're changing things up. I got my friend here, Anthony Orissus. Anthony, take it away. Guys, welcome to a very special episode of Grease Chats, where today we will be interviewing the host himself, Tony Cariotis. So thank you for having me, Tony. Pleasure to be here. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. And today I'm going to be asking Tony uh, all sorts of different questions to get to know him, uh, his businesses, and what's in store for the future. So... Tony, let's get right into it. I love it. All right, cool. Um, tell me about yourself. Let's, let's you interview so many people on your show. Who is Tony Cariotis? Oof, who's Tony Cariotis? Uh, Started with a hard question. Yeah, this is a difficult I one. Greek American, uh, roots from Kalamata and Kalinos. Um, I call myself an entrepreneur. Uh, I like to get my hands involved in a lot of different things. As you know, I do Greece, Greece Media, involved with some other. Uh, business endeavors, uh, like getting involved in philanthropy, charitable uh, initiatives, so a little bit of everything. Right. And I want to touch on everything. Yeah. And you mentioned, uh, and I think a lot of people know you for um, your entrepreneurial um, endeavors, and mm-hmm. you have quite a few of them. So what inspires you to do what you do? What inspires me? Uh, I mean, I love creating stuff and seeing how people react to it, if it changes someone's life. Uh, Obviously, charitable work does change people's lives, and I've been involved with that kind of work for quite some time. And just to see the smiles that gets put on people's faces um, really is inspiring. So you have a lot of different accounts and um, really an umbrella of so many different businesses and so many different sectors. What made you decide you were going to build the Grease brand? Uh... I mean, does that, I mean, I found an opportunity. Uh, I Photography and film is always something that I liked from a young age. It's what I know this isn't what I did after school, but it is what I went to school for. And then around 2016, 2017, I was on a trip to Greece and kind of got the travel bug. And I was taking some pictures. I put one on, and it, it, I started getting them online. And I'm like, all right, people like this stuff. Let's see if we can turn this into something or... Can we turn traveling into a business? And that's where we're at. We're Alan Hoppin. And so you never had any formal uh, training in photography? No, self-taught. Self-taught everything, even to this day? Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. pretty impressive, man. Um, I mean, I went to school for videography slash multi-camera production slash, yeah, to like run a like behind the scenes of a news show or to create a f- movie, but... I still self-taught most of it. The editing, I learned a little bit of stuff there, but everything's been trial and error. Like with, with most things, it's it's you learn on the job mm-hmm. and by doing so. For sure. Yeah, that makes sense. So what's unique about your business? What's unique is I, I try to be genuine, organic, uh, no gimmicks. Mm-hmm. Um, everything you see online, my fingerprints are on it. Um, I, I know it might look like there's a team that's putting all this, but most of the content is my work. I have help, obviously, but not for help in behind the scenes stuff, but not actually in the creating stuff. But just to be genuine or and authentic, because people can see through the lies, and that's not what I'm about. Right, and and I, I don't know if I would have believed it if I didn't see it myself. So yeah. I saw firsthand how many hats you wear when uh, I was in Greece with you. I was like, who does your editing and, and this and that and planning all your posts? And you're like, yeah. you're looking at them. So <laughs> it's, it's pretty incredible how many yeah. things you, yeah. t- you take on, man. Um, what advice would you give to somebody that's maybe trying to figure out what they want to do in life? Maybe they want to become an entrepreneur. They're not sure what to do yet. What, what, what advice would you give to someone like that? Uh, do what makes you happy. I mean, happiness is what's most important at the end because I mean, you could have a great job, but if you're just working, going home, eating, sleeping, and working and doing the same, I, a lot of people do it. And I mean, I'm not mm-hmm. saying like they're living a miserable life, but if they're not happy, then why? If it's if that's what you need to do, support a family, that's a different situation. Right. But if you're young and you're on your own and you're still just trying things out, I mean, do what what excites you. Like I I don't feel like I go to work. Right. I mean, people think I don't even work. <laughs> <laughs> I still wonder about that. <laughs> now, so is there anything else that you could have done? If you were not doing this, is yeah. there something else that you're like, hey, this would have been maybe a path that would have made me happy uh, if I had not stumbled upon yeah. this opportunity? Um, 
I'm not sure. I probably would have still been doing what I was doing before. I did to to go full time into trying to develop this Greece brand. Before I w- it was still in the creative world. I was it was design. Um, ran a, a family business that we did custom screen burning embroidery. So customers would come in. They need new gear for their staff. So we would design not only their design for their logo but also design what they're going to wear so it was creative work and i mean i liked it it was good it was good paying but i i think i ran uh i did that for what 15 years so i think it was time to try something else i had one foot out the door for like three years (laughs) (laughs) hey man some people have one foot out the door for 10 15 20 years of job so but then i told myself give give yourself a three-year window and go hard at this if it doesn't work out, you can always go back to that. Did you transition from doing uh, shirts and working in the family business to directly to Greece? Or no. Um, while doing that, I was also trying to build other things. Mm-hmm. Um, real estate. I got into uh, real estate investing through rental property acquisitions, uh, just to build passive income, and that allows me to do things like this. Um, other than that, also I've done some other foundational work, but not for for pay. And just recently took the investing into the other markets. But for the most part, before the Greece move, it was uh, through real estate. Okay. Uh, how do you define success? I think this goes back to talking about happiness. Mm-hmm. Um, you, can, you can win in a lot of things, but if it comes at the cost of going home and being miserable, then is that success? I, I kind of thought you'd go there, especially because you put such an emphasis on on your answer, on what inspires you earlier. And I think when people find happiness in something, all roads lead to happiness. You know yeah, what I mean? And, right. and that becomes their MO um, in, in how can I uh, continue to be happy because when I'm the best version of myself, then in turn anyone that's associated with me, whether it's a spouse, family member, friends, you give your full self when you are happy. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm with you on that being like the most important thing. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, too. most definitely. Yeah. Um, what have you enjoyed most about starting your company and your business? What have I enjoyed most? Uh, I can't. I, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, traveling around Greece is pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> if, you I don't know how I, answer, if you give any other answer aside from that, I would have called you out. Yeah. That had to be the best. I don't know how I was going somewhere else at first. Wait, wait, wait! wait I got a clear answer right, on this. Right. Yeah. Look. Uh, obviously, people see me posting pictures of jump island hop and all that. It's fun. I am not going to sit here and say don't do it. Uh, but there is a, there comes a part of it where you are working, and no matter what you do, things do get tiring. So, like, if I, we set out a three- to four-month tour, by the third month, exhaustion kicks in. And people are like, oh, you can't say that. You're on vacation. Yeah, but you're working, and you're running around, and there's this. But I will never tell that to someone's face. Right. It, it's fun what we do, but it's also work. And I'm on the clock. So I have a sleep eight hours. What's 24 minutes? Eight. I work 16, 16 yeah. hours. It's almost like, like a rock star or a, an actor or an actress that you know, is involved in like either a world tour or a big production. And you know, only, they can only tell other actors that traveling and, and all this wear is, you know, wears on them after a while. Yeah. But anyone outside that won't necessarily Never understand. understand. No, so, absolutely not. No, I, I get that. Um, so with your brand, your businesses, your accounts, you've established a nice following. How do you, and not just in numbers, but engagement and people caring about the brand, what you have to say, how do you establish a culture and a community? Uh, but I mean, building the community just comes from repetitive work, doing, running events, um, being genuine. Um, if you're just going to post things online and just be extremely static information or just bl- blah, mm-hmm. you, you got to put yourself out there. You got to show excitement. Uh, I remember one time someone DM'd me and said, uh, you, you post too many exclamation points. <laughs> And you you use too many exclamation points, and I told him I'm living my life. I'm living life, man. I'm excited. I like what I do, um, but just because it might look like it's not, but you're being genuine, so you're showing excitement, and people build will like that, and they, then there's trust built, and once you have trust, now the community comes, and 
I think just being genuine and constantly putting content out there, uh, showing that you're doing this for everybody helps you build a community. And running events, like I've always been someone that likes to galvanize the people with events, whether it's been through Greek networking or uh, we can touch on this in a bit later, but mm -hmm. like uh, through my foundation work, um, I've always been involved in community building. And you mentioned something earlier about the exclamation points and that somehow rub somebody the wrong way. You're never going to please everyone, as we <laughs> no, know. No, no, no. But he was trying to be funny in the DMs. Like, when I think I might have replied back and he just never said anything again. I hope there was a lot of exclamation points in yeah, your response. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I think, you know, you being genuinely you, like, hey, if you're the type of guy that wants to put five exclamation points at the end of something, you're yeah. being true to you. And yeah. if you didn't do that, it would be off-brand. So Definitely. I think that's another reason, um, just from the outside looking in, why people gravitate to all the different accounts that you have is yeah. because it is very true, it's very authentic, and you're not trying to be somebody else, you are being you, and I think that's reflected in the content. Definitely, most definitely. So for someone else that's maybe trying to get to Tony's level of success when it comes to um, starting an account, or maybe they have an account and they're trying to grow it, what's your advice to someone that's trying to grow, whether they're at stage one or maybe they're at stage five but they're just not where they want to be yet mm. get ready for a long ride <laughs> yeah. get yeah, ready true. get ready for a long ride get, there's gonna be times it's all about consistency like the longer you last the bigger you're gonna grow there's a lot of accounts that come out and they come out with a bang then two months later they lose the flare they're gone and then there's the ones that go three four years and now they don't, the ones that left because they didn't see that exponential growth and they said, this isn't for me or this isn't worth it or nobody likes what I'm doing or they, they don't understand me or something like that. But you got to break through. You got to go, you got to fight through, like even, no, it doesn't compare to a falling stock where you got to stick with it. <laughs> Good. I mean, in a way it does. You got to, yeah, you got to weather the storms. You got to just be consistent. And then by year two, it grows a little bit more. And by year three, it grows a little bit more. And then once you have that audience, the, the bigger the, it's like it's like a snowball effect. Right. The bigger, the longer you go, the bigger it's going to get. But it's so small, the, the difference each day that you don't notice. It's like seeing a baby grow up. When you're around that baby every day, and then you look back four years later in a picture on your phone, you're like, that's not what this baby looked like. But you never, if you're around that baby every day, you know it never changed. Right. That's an excellent analogy, actually. And also, that I almost alluded to, like, working out. Like, you don't see the progress in yeah. yourself, and yeah. someone sees you three months later, like, yeah. you've been working out. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but, yeah, I'd like to get into that. So do you think, then, that people are quitting too early or do you think they're not going into it with the right mindset of what's to come? I mean, you got to, I mean, you have to have a plan. You got to have a plan. You're like, what you got to bring value. Right. If you're not bringing value, what are you doing? Are you just posting a picture of, of the Acropolis just because it, you like it? Or are you bringing something to the table? Are you offering this photo as a print for someone's house? Are you, are you teaching people information about the history of Greece? Are you... Uh, are you selling tours? Value. It, 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 it can be an empty photo. You're going to get the clicks, the likes, and this, but it ends there. Mm -hmm. But the minute you bring value, now you can monetize, or now you can build a community. You might, you might, you might like the Acropolis so much that you start a, a weekly chat, a weekly, uh, whether it's a telegram or in a conference room like this and getting people together and talking about the history of Greece. And now you create a community. Right. Right. And I think I heard somewhere that everyone wants to start start a podcast, right? Especially in the last few years. Yeah. Um, I think it was like, I forget the statistic, but it's like 90 something percent, like 96 percent don't make it past episode eight. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, can, I can agree with that. Because when I started this, I didn't know where it was going to go. In the first six months, I had two episodes. Right. But then you, you got to believe in the product because no one else is going to believe in it. Maybe the two people that you, I had on the first two episodes believed in it because they were on it. But everyone else, like, oh, he's got a podcast, he's got two episodes. Like, everyone, everyone's got two episodes. Everyone's got two episodes. Right. And I think more people believe in it once you've established credibility and all of a sudden people are like, I believe in you. And yeah. that's natural after you yeah. maybe not, you might not even believe in yourself in the beginning, but if mm -hmm. you persevere at some point, you're going to get more belief and more encouragement as time goes on. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I think roughing through the beginning is, is oftentimes the roughest part. Mm -hmm. And that's where most people, I think, just 
throw yeah, everything down the quit. It, and it's not just with podcasts. That can be with social media pages. That can be with right. a company. That can be with a community that you're uh, a, a group that you're doing. It gets everything. You got to fight through the, the development phase, right. which is the most important. You got to build a foundation. Like I have. I, I know several people who are, whether it's in business or things, like if they see a shortcut, they want to take it. And I'm like, why the hell are you going to take that shortcut? First, you got to enjoy the process. That's mm-hmm. by far the storytelling, the people you meet along the way, uh, the memories you're going to have. But if you skip if you skip from this to here, and now you're here, you're great, you're living your life, but you didn't realize how hard it was to do that. And then you overlook the most, the smallest thing that cracks that foundation and collapses. Facts. Yep. But if you did this step by step by step by step, you know exactly how thick the glass is in the building you built. And you know that that storm cannot crack that glass. And I think that's, you know, it's things like that. It's the tedious work. It's the rough work that when you're in it, you might not appreciate it. But then you'll see somebody that's very established down the line and be like, tell me about your career and your life. And they'll talk about those rough times that you just talked about yeah. as the good old days so you don't appreciate them while you're going through the yeah. struggle yeah. but once you kind of break through and mm-hmm. go to the next level yeah. people look back at that they wear like a badge of honor because that's really sure. where it's leveling up yeah. it's leveling up and it's a cool feeling and for those that think that you never like oh it's just a repetitive like, it's it's so hard to grow to grow grow you know when you break through you see it mm. you know when you got to level two i like that i like that uh so what we know about what you've done. We know about. Tell us about what you're working on right now. Uh, working on some, a lot of stuff. Some stuff I can't get into. Um, Tell me after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as Grease Media, I mean, Grease Media has been something that I've been working on for a few years, and I am no rush to officially say it's ready and in its final form. It'll never be in its final form, but it's been like a passion project where. I have all these ideas for it. Once one part's finalized, I said, okay, now that's a feature of Grease Media. Like, for instance, we added last year that you can go on the site and book tickets for day trips in Greece. I was excited to add that. It was a feature, but that's not what I built Grease Media for. Gotcha. Uh, the podcast is part of Grease Media. It's not why I started Grease Media. We sell photography. It's not why I started Grease Media. Um, we have a film series, the Naked series. Right. Uh, that's not why I started Greece Media, but films teaching you, showing you about Greece and tourism is important for Greece Media. So it's a bunch of pieces put together as media for Greece, but in its final form, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. I'm all about pivoting. So if I see, all right, this leg no longer should be here, we're going to remove it. Or we got to go all in on this part and we'll do that. Um, but as far as like our film series, I am working on, we have four films in post-production right now. Okay. So we did Naked Century two years ago. It's been two years, year and a half. That was shot in January, 2020. Um, then we did Naked Now, so last year, for those who haven't watched it yet, these are basically, imagine a beautiful photo with sound and it moves throughout the location. So picture yourself in Ia Santorini, and we frame these amazing 16 by nine views, and we let that view just sit there for three, 30 seconds to two minutes, and you just hear that sound, then we move to another spot, another spot. We did that with Nausa. Um, Naked Sarakiniko is ready, but we, re- we delayed the release. And upcoming next, we're working on Mykonos. These are shot, very shot, but not finished yet. Mykonos, Kalinos, Meteora. And Hios should be one of them, maybe one day. Yeah, we'll see. No, it will we'll be. See. It will be. It will be. <laughs> we'll go through uh, Masti Chokoria. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. You're good. You remember that, no? So I think what you saw, a few things. I've seen um, the Naked series before, uh, it's on YouTube. And I'd say what's really incredible is that you can watch it, you can watch it sitting down on your couch and just kind of get lost in the scenery and just really be taken away by it. That's one thing, right? It could be almost therapeutic. Mm -hmm. You can listen to it if you want um, on pause with your favorite music in the background. It could be just something you kind of have playing on the, on, if you have friends over, you want something like Mm -hmm. 
in the background because a lot of times yep. people have friends over they don't know what to put on yeah no that's a, that's perfect for that it's i i always perfect. say these videos are perfect for background video you don't have to put the volume up but you can it's not gonna be that loud because all you're gonna hear is nature right so it's perfect just put it on replay we'll get the views up but yeah. you just let them replay <laughs> it <won't> just... <laughs> <laughs> so should you uh and then just one last thing i want to touch on that as well is you i think it's important to kind of highlight this so you talked about when you first started Grease Media and kind of what you wanted to focus on. And what I found very interesting was what you intended to do wasn't necessarily what happened and it actually evolved. So as you continue to put like your time in it, your blood, sweat, blood, sweat and tears in it, you kind of see new and new opportunities so long as you're open-minded to the evolution of the brand. And I think from what you maybe had the intention of starting Grease Media at the beginning to now, would you ever have thought it would have spun in this direction? Was this ever something that you saw as part of the bigger picture? Uh, some parts of it I did see coming, some parts I didn't. But I always knew going into it, I had this vision, but what it's going to turn out to be is not what I thought of, thought of it was going to be. So, I mean, to the point, no, I, it's going to become something different next year. And I don't know exactly what that's gonna look like, and that's what that excites me, because that keeps it, that doesn't let it get stale. That's the beauty of owning your own business, because there's, I think everyone just sees the five percent of it of just like Tony's killing it, he's traveling, he's living the best life. Mm -hmm. But having been in Greece with you and seen all the things, like, well, where's Tony? Well, Tony's out and he's doing film, and I haven't seen him in hours, and I'm, I should call the police. Like, where is he? Where, where is this kid? And But you're actually doing work, so there's more to it than meets the eye. Yeah. And uh, no, man, that's, that's that's good to hear, and love to hear the next steps of for what's to come. Um, let's talk about more you and your work ethic, because obviously you wouldn't have gotten to where you are today without a certain work ethic. So this is a popular method. I want to know if you do it. Do you write out your goals? Um, I do and I don't. I got to get better at it, but I, I do, yes. The answer is yes, but not to the extent I should be doing it. Interesting. Okay. So do you have a vision board? I do not. Okay. And I know we've talked about this before, and I know they're effective. I'm putting you on blast in front of the Put me on blast. <laughs> That's what I have to do here. But I do. I probably should. Yes. But I don't. Okay. Next episode, we'll we'll hear all about the vision board. Yes. Can't, can't wait to hear about You're it. You're going to see me t tweeting and Instagramming <laughs> all about our vision boards now because you got me excited. Can't wait to hear it. So how do you chase your goals then? I stare at them 18, 16 hours a day. On your vision board? No, right here. <laughs> I got these two eyes. That's all I need. Okay. Um, if I know, if a goal is set, it's on my mind pretty much most of the day. Okay. Every day. So, so it's on your mind, and do you feel like the law of attraction comes into play there? Are you manifesting these things that are in your mind? Have you been surprised by what has been brought into your life, and do you think that you having that vision you just talked about mm -hmm brings them into reality yeah no, i know i definitely think so but it's I, and i never think of it as like oh just because i think about it it's magic no it's because you're thinking about it all day you're altering your moves all day to right. get there it's, it's as simple as that like the, the law of attraction in my opinion is that what it's called the law of attraction mm -hmm. it's not magic it's you have this thing in your mind you're gonna make a decision like we make millions of decisions every day and you make one decision turn right out of this building turn left your life's gonna be different Yep. But if you have, um, if I'm chasing this one goal, I'm going to go down that right path and it's going to come. It's also very much like that example of you get what you look for. So like, let's just yeah. say you're in the market to buy a white Jeep. Yeah. Right? And you want to buy a white Jeep. Well, when yeah. you're on the road for the next couple of weeks, that's all you're going to see are white Jeeps. Exactly. You put but like, and it's also realistic. You have to have realistic goals. Like, yeah, I like playing basketball, but no matter how much I think about it, I'm never going to dunk. <laughs> I'm never going to dunk. It's not going to happen. Look at you, a trampoline. We can do something. We can work on it. There's always ways. <laughs> How many hours do you focus on what you're doing? And I know you talked about like there's different, and I'm sure if you could also tell us too, like I think sometimes when people think of work traditionally, like, okay, Tony's at work. They think, you know, the old way of work was yeah. someone sitting at a desk with a pen and pad or on their right, laptop right. fully right. dedicated. But tell, walk right, us in that style that. of work, I don't work. <laughs> Fair. Fair enough. <laughs> but it's unfortunately, and I say this unfortunately, but it's all the only way you're gonna to get to where you want to get to. Sixteen hours a day. Okay. 
it's I'm locked in. Like, yeah, there's times where I'll put on a t- like I don't watch a lot of TV. I'm not gonna lie, but there might might be a time where we I watch stuff, or I watch a basketball game, or I watch, or we go out for a walk, or we go to out into town, but. The phone's on you, and today's world it runs on a phone. Right. You get a, a message, you got to reply to the client or to a potential collaboration. So, yeah, that hour we went and had fun, but I replied to two critical messages. Is that work? I would say so. Would you yeah. say so? I think so. So yeah. I'm locked. I'm clocked in, locked in, however you want to call it, all day long. But not in traditional sense where I'm at a desk. So you might look at it as. I have my day free, but at the same time, you're on call. Right. As a land, like I told you, I'm in real estate, a toilet breaks, and it's Easter night. I got to go take care of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's happened. Has it? Uh, on Easter? Is on this a real example? Yeah, yeah. Easter, not the Easter Eve where you got to go to church. Right, right. The, the next day after the family gathering, I had to go because a tenant messed up a toilet. Duty calls. And duty calls. I guess. Local, but local it's boys. the law is the landlord's got to take care of it, right? Mm-hmm. So, and you know what? Like now, in a, I don't even know if we could say this is a post-pandemic world, or we still, I, who knows? Wherever we are currently, yeah, right yeah. now yeah. in twenty twenty one October or November of twenty twenty one, the the idea of what work is has radically changed. Um, yeah. Years ago, pre pandemic. You know, with my job, I do a lot of things on the computer, and there's a lot of times where I do have to be stationed and sit somewhere, and people would see me at a coffee shop, and they'd be like, "Aren't you? Are you working?" I'm like, "Yeah, I am working." They're like, why aren't you at an office? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, no one would even dare ask that question. So the, I guess everyone's uh, viewpoint of like what is work has radically changed. So to your answer that you gave earlier, yeah, if you can work and you're on the go and still accomplishing things at the same time, I guess yeah. there's, there's really no better way to handle your business. While living and your life at the same time, the work is so different now from where it was in the past. Right. I can tell you some stories that, and this might sound ridiculous, and I know you you laughed at me one time when I did this. I took an extremely long train ride, but there was actually a legitimate reason. I edited Naked Now on the train. Oh, ride. get out of here! Ah. So I was going to Florida, and I had a project to finish. And going to Florida from where? From up here in Boston, New York. Uh, I'm not sure. Did I leave from New York or Boston that trip? I don't remember. Besides the point, it's a two-hour difference, three-hour difference. Um, Okay, I knew I was going to Florida for the next week, week and a half. I had to finish a major project. I knew when I go to Florida, it ain't going to get done. I might budget two, three hours a day. It's not going to get done. So I told myself, even when I was staying at home, I couldn't focus to get it done. So I said... There's this long train ride. It's going to get me to my destination. It gives me enough time to finish the project from start to finish with breaks. I want to test this out. It was the most productive day of the year. Really? No kidding. Because in Boston, New York, I couldn't focus and sit there and get all this done. When I, if I go to Florida, I ain't happening. I might work an hour. I might do this, but it's 75 and 80 degrees and sunny. Uh, perfect. We're going to be going out and doing things. That ain't happening. So they're like, oh, why aren't you flying down? I'm like, I have a legit reason. I'm not going to share that, though, because I didn't want to talk about it. Fair. So I'm like, I'm going to take the train right now. Went in, had my hard drive, my laptop, banged out the trailer, banged out the film. Laser focused. It was laser focused. I had no one bothering me. I had, at times, no signal. So I couldn't get distracted. I had lunch every, food every four hours, five hours. Grinded, focused, folded the laptop an hour before we got there, and I was done. Yeah. How about planes? Are you the same on planes? Are you no. as productive on planes? I tell myself I'm going to get all this stuff done on the plane. Nothing comes out of my bag on a plane. Really? It's Nothing. the opposite. I, on planes, I, I'm like my Nothing best. Nothing comes really? out of the bag on a plane. No kidding. Do you sleep on the planes? Because you take a lot of trips to Greece. I, if, of the tw- 18 times I've gone to Greece, you, you counted? Can, ballpark, it's no, 17, no. 18. <laughs> and we had this talk. That's why I said that. <laughs> if you add up all the minutes I've slept, it probably wouldn't surpass an hour. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
I okay. can't sleep on a plane. And it's not because of fear or this or that, the noise, the vibration. So the big planes, if you have a window seat, because I only said window, I like window. Same. The way the curve is, I just fall into the curve and I can't sleep. It's very hard to get comfortable on that plane. It really is. Oh, big, fancy, nice plane. Yeah, it's cute and all, but I can't get comfortable. Why can't they fix the technology on the side what? for that? The, the plane <laughs> that I flew back on this past year, I actually specifically chose that route because of the plane that was going to take me from Germany to Boston is this super modern plane that's recently come out. And I've been on it once a while ago, not knowing. And I'm like, there's an opportunity to get on that plane because it is supposedly 40% quieter. Huh. And... You don't feel turbulence when they're supposed to be turbulence. It's that. It's wow. that. Yeah. And it got to a point where like it, the plane went, did one of these and settled. And I was like, this plane's amazing. How about the headrest situation? That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because first of all, these things that they have, they curl out like this. We're supposed to like yeah, bend. They're terrible. Yeah, I'm not tall. Enough, terrible. First of all, I'm not tall enough. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even reach that thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I get the window seat, so it's curved. I lean in. I can't get comfortable. I used to I used to carry as a carry on a backpack filled with Lufthansa pl- pillows because I used to take one every time oh, and I would nice. just stuff it, and then it got to, it got to the point where it was nice and big, and um, you know, I haven't brought it lately, but because I could never sleep, so I'm like I'm gonna bring this thing, I'm not gonna sleep, so I'm not gonna bring this. Thing. Our headrest conversation was very much like our uh, uh, off the record conversations that always sound like Seinfeld conversations. Yes. So I just yeah. want to throw that out so, there. Yeah. So how did we get to this very, point? We were, talking about, we were talking about uh, <laughs> we we're talking about how how pillows are. Oh, how work has the, changed, and yes, I took you yes. down the train. Yeah, right? no, it's all good, man. Took the midnight train yeah, going we'll, anywhere. We'll do that, but yeah. we'll, we'll we'll get back on track here. Um, uh, so with doing what you've done for as long as you have. Um, how do you handle competition, and what would you define as competition? Um, look, this might sound, I know it's not going to sound disrespectful, but I don't look at competition as in a negative way, and I don't look at it as competition. Because mm-hmm. um, competition helps. You need people pushing you. And there's never going to be one of something. Like, the world's designed to have Tons of journalists, tons of actors, tons of this, tons of that. We can coexist. Everyone can do this stuff. Um, so when someone says, oh, there's a lot of these Greek pages, or Greece, it's a lot. Hey, they're building an audience. Right. It doesn't affect me. It's about finding their niche almost then. Yeah. If I your niche, like, okay, I like I said, bring value. We talked about this earlier. If you can bring your value and focus on one thing, you're doing pretty good. But you can. But there's also a balance. You got to, Okay, why are we doing this? Are we doing this just to build a following? Or are we doing this to bring value? Are we doing this to make people laugh? Are we doing this to inform people? You just have to have a game plan. But as far as competition, um, I've never felt that the competition's a negative, and it's. I never felt that it's affecting me in a bad way. If anything, it's a good way because. We push each other, mm-hmm. but I don't. I don't honestly just. But this healthy competition. Yeah, there's healthy competition, but there's also not many pages that. There's not. I mean, okay, there is the grease page. Everybody's posting grease pages. All right, I have the grease. I grease whatever. But I still don't look at it as the other pages competition because there's only one version of me. Right. So right. they're not competition. They're not me. Oof, that's good. That's. It's a fire drop. I like that. I like that, man. Um, there, so we had discussed this, um, I think it was the other week, and there was a tweet uh, that I had found, and I know that we had discussed it and, and it resonated with you. So I'm just going to go, just to do it justice, I'm going to mm-hmm. read off this paper here. But the, the tweet basically talks about that with some people, you just know that once they've decided what they want, they're getting it. Mm. Whether it's tomorrow or in 10 years. That was a great share. Yeah, whether it's tomorrow or in 10 years, there's no other option. And I know you had mentioned to me, like, I I really, this resonates with me a lot. Um, Can you explain why this one in particular uh, resonated? Uh, Because it's sort of like, you asked me, do I set goals? Mm -hmm. I set goals. I set big goals. And then, so one thing I do when I set a goal is, I know it's probably not 
if I know that it's a goal that I'm going to get to, or if it's in the it's coming soon, or like I might be dropping something soon, I might be working on a new project, I'll announce it, mm. and why I w- and I'll announce it with no game plan, <laughs> and now I know I have to do Oof. it. Respect. I have to respect. Do it. Like when I, I think I announced the podcast before I had an episode. Wow. And then I'm like, I got to do it. Or I might have announced this or that. I got to do it. It's your version of holding yourself accountable. Yes. Put it out there. Right. So now when I run around saying I can't do that because I have work, they're like, what work are you doing? You ain't working. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I got, a, I got this boss. Who's your boss? <laughs> that Instagram that. post I posted, I'm doing this on this day, so I have to do it. That's my boss. My boss is the announcement. That's... So I love that for a multitude of reasons. I, and, and here's one of the, like, the first thing that comes to mind is that when you are an entrepreneur and you are a self-starter, there is no one saying, hey, Tony, Tony, wake yeah. up. No, there's not. Tony, let's so go. I, I need to do that because yeah. no one else is going to say, you, your, your, your film is due next week. Right. I'll book me a ticket on that train and I'll get it done. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to be riding trains all around the country. <laughs> um, but to go back to what you said, so some examples that can be off this topic. I've had this example in other stuff. So I, I've also, I also volunteer as a basketball coach right. for my church the last since 2007. So what's that? 14 years. And there was one point where I had a really young team. And we can even no, we had an older team. Then we became a young team, but we always lost to this one team every single year. And one of the years we lost to them in the finals. And a few of the kids were like, down, this is that. I'm like, guys, I want you guys to just watch them celebrate. Stare at it. Mm. I want it to burn. Oof. Like, let it, like, look at their smiles. You guys are in sweat, tears, whatever, but just look at it. We will get there. Mm. And I always wanted to be this team. Always, always, always. I, they had a dynasty. I wanted a dynasty. They, had, they won it three, four years in a row. I want to win it four years in a row. So that was all I thought about. Even though it was just volunteer work. When it came to basketball, I had a goal is to get to where that team is, surpass them, and become the new staple. And eventually, 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 we got to the point where we were good enough to become the team to beat. And we had them in the finals, and we knocked them off. Boom. And then we ran off four years of dominance. Really? Yeah. Now, did you? Were there multiple championships in that in that four if years? If you include all the tournaments we participate, participated in, the season playoffs, we won about twelve championships. Oof. So Damn. I got myself a little dynasty. I would say so. I would say so, man. You should be rocking the rings on I got the fingers. The Phil Jackson. <laughs> <rings. laughs> He's got twelve or eleven. I lost track. Hold on. Let me. I just, I just know how many the the teams I have. All the teams yeah. I root for yeah. don't have eleven or twelve combined. So I don't even <laughs> want to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, we we got so good, man. We got so good to the point where like I didn't even have to do coaching anymore. By like the second, no, by like the third year with this group, I just they knew what to do. And there'd be times where we'd be losing by like eight with like a minute and a half left. And it was like, oh, they're, they're gonna lose. They're gonna lose. It'd be like a finals game in a tournament. And I just called them out, like guys. We, we're not going to lose to this team. Come on. We don't lose to this team. We never lose to this team. We, we always beat this team. And we trim it down to like two with like 10 seconds left. One of the guys would steal the ball and get an and one. And we walk out with the trophy. It was Dude, cool. That's the stuff you never, ever yeah. forget. And I guarantee you all those kids who are probably now grown men uh, who are on that team yeah. uh, will be telling those stories for the rest of their lives too. Yeah. Because when you build something and you put your efforts into something you care um, and you get to reap those rewards, mm-hmm. uh, it stays with you forever. And yeah. you'll be talking about that for the rest of your life to your right. grandkids. It's one of those no, type for things. Sure. And, like, you, you see this stuff in sports a lot where they say storybook endings and this isn't that. Mm. Storybook endings, in my opinion, because I've been around sports my life, are real to the ones that genuinely earn it. Like, Tom Brady's a storybook. Like, this guy. But look at the work he puts in. Right. Like, you can't create these – you can't create what uh, – you can't write what he's done. He runs off a dynasty like Joe Montana. He right. goes, uh, he wants to do what he did, go to the, another team and win a championship. Does that. Um, what else did he do? Basically, Married a supermodel? That, oh, that's, that, 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 I'm talking <laughs> about just the sports part. Uh, some of the ways that he won these, these massive comebacks when everyone counted him out. Uh, anything that Joe Montana couldn't do, he wanted to do better. Right. Like, he went to another team, Montana lost. He went to the team, he won. Um, and just 
these things only come to the people that work hard. They, right. they really do. So with that run we had, these two kids that were part of it from the beginning to the end, there were these two twins that I had. And when they came in as freshmen, I knew they were going to be the best players in the league quick. And by, like, year two, they were, like, the best players in the league. Uh, and on the final game, I got to coach them. It was a tournament game, down eight with two minutes left. And I told them, we do not lose this team, guys. It's another team. I just, I just give them both. I just tell them stuff. Like, we don't lose this team. Come on. <laughs> so we cut down the lead to, like, three. And it's down to the last two possessions. And these two twins have been amazing. And the one play goes to one twin. He hits a three to tie it. We get the ball off a rebound with 10 seconds left. I called time out, and I said, he hooked you up for your last shot. What you're going to do right now is you're going to get the ball. You're going to drive in the paint. Everyone's going to think you're going for that and one You're going to kick it out to your – we're down two. So you're going to go in think – they're going to think you're going in for the tie. You're going to kick it out to your brother. He's going to have his final shot of his career, and it's going to be a game winner for this tournament. Ooh. Wow. And it drew out exactly what we said. He shoots the ball. The ball goes, it goes off, squish, and I'm like, oh. Wow. It was cool. Storybook ending? Hey, man. I guess. I can say so. I know it's not an NBA or professional, but still. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's all levels. You're playing people of your level, so it's the same thing. My little sister played, and I got more into those games at her her Goya Church League than I did when I watched the Knicks. Professional NBA is is not It's it's not even close. So I want to, yeah, going back on track. Yeah, let's get back on track. uh, We're going to say a little humble brag there that I got those Phil Jackson rings. That's awesome. Um, I want to talk about what a lot of people know you for, and that's social media, and I think what a lot of people want to like learn more about. Yeah. So social media, uh, the pat and the uh, the obvious power that it has. You built obviously quite a presence on it. Uh, We know social media is you know to be on the platform is free, but. Does building the audience, and if you can humble brag and tell us how many followers you have, yeah. I know it's quite a lot, but does that come at any sort of cost? Time. Mm. Time's money. Um, people, like we talked about this earlier, what does it take to build this? Well, I get to, uh, I'm not growing. I need to, I, I quit. Right. No, like what I've done takes three, four, five, six years. Mm. And it takes being genuine. It takes being honest it takes being nice like anything i put up is wholesome i don't attack people like everything's fun we keep it fresh we create all the content so there's no borrowing there's no taking someone else's content and greekifying it or doing this or doing that no no everything you see we've created and that's being genuine and that's just my motto like that's the philosophy when i started this out that's what i wanted it to be i wanted it to be wholesome fun and even I take take that into like we've pivoted recently, and I know you you've seen this stuff where we're running around yelling about whatever, but it's wholesome. It's, a lot of people have seen we're, we're not attacking people in these. We're right. be we're finding a cute, fun, polarizing way to bring value and to teach people whether it's right or wrong. If the, if the things are forbidden or not, most of them are. But then we push it a little bit, and we just say, eh, maybe that was not a lot. But it, it's it, we don't everything's fun. We keep it fun. It's like you said, it's a wholesome way to gain laughs. It's not controversial or, you know, especially yeah. in this day and age. No one's being attacked. A lot of people get offended for things that maybe they shouldn't in this day and age. Yeah. That's a whole other discussion. But I don't think anyone could be offended by any of these skits because yeah. it is, it's wholesome. It's no matter who you are, you watch it, you're going to get a laugh out of it. And there's so many of them that you can get lost in the vortex. Of, you can. And I, I, I got lost in them because yeah. I went on TikTok and I was checking <laughs> tags and apparently, there's about a 500 to 1,000 remakes already of people wow. running around creating skits. They'll do something like grab the guy's coffee mug, hey, buy whatever. <laughs> and they're just, I, I'm like, there's this many remakes. So now I'm going to start sharing other people's. So, so. Even though I said a second ago, I don't share other people's content, but this is different. Well, the, this the, the evolution of. It was the of evolution of. We just saw yep. an evolution happen right I'll here. Buy whatever. So at the time of. So right now, it's. I think it's you know early November, um, but how long has this video even been, or the series of videos even been out there that it's already taking on this? If I would ever do. Own... Uh, it started. All right, so the inception of the why I even started yelling the word out. For those of you who see it or wearing the shirt that says it, available on my website. Not there yet, but actually, by the time <laughs> this posts, I'll have them available. It's out. Yeah, they're out. You just spoke it to the universe, yeah, so it's, it's gonna happen. Now, now, grab, grab my hat. Uh, <laughs> 
one day I was in, uh, we were in, said it was the summer, it was me, Maria, and Christina from Yamas. And we, Marie, we're pulling up to the bakery. Maria was going to run and grab us all coffees. And I'm just parallel parking in front of the bakery. And this guy with a motorcycle comes and just puts it behind me. And I'm like, hey, come on, man. And he goes, I'll buy whatever. And I was <laughs> like, ah, come on. <laughs> and then he just goes inside. Some lady comes out. I couldn't tell her age from where I was standing. Could have been his wife, his mother. I don't know. Grabs his bike and starts pushing it closer to me. She goes, I'll buy whatever. And I'm like, she's just grabbing coffee. Like, I'm not going around a block. I'm going to leave it right here. So after that, I just started just mumbling it all day for like two weeks. <laughs> so then one day, like, Maria, video me saying, let's just see how this looks on camera. So I'm on her porch like a week. Uh, no, I was actually at like a lunch one time. And then on a porch, it's just all it was. It wasn't a skit. It was just, I want to see how it looks. And then one day, we're in Carinos. And we're like, oh, let's do it. Make this into a skit. So we had, well, the, the villa we were staying at had this a fig tree and I'm like go in there and act like you're picking a fig and I'll be on the balcony and I'll catch you and I'm like yep buy whatever so we put that up people were loving it I'm like let's keep doing this then we did uh, no diving in the pool and she as she's ready to jump I yell it and then she just falls in whatever and then we just start running them off and I guess kids now in school from what I'm told all around Greece are running around yelling up by whatever there. It, that's so wild as long as they're not yelling it at their teacher I'm fine <laughs> <laughs> are you guys yelling, yelling at your teacher? And even if they are, but don't do that. No, um, don't do <laughs> that. And I even one of them, I'm like, hey man, video of the kids in school saying it. He goes, I buy whatever. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, you're not allowed to have your phone in school oh, in Greece. You got to buy whatever they do. Yeah, he said it to me. He goes, look, you buy whatever. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, you can't, you can't use your phone in Greece on, in school. It's, it's so. If only the guy on the motorcycle knew what he started. It's unbelievable. And yeah. just a funny story with. About whatever that uh, on my end is years ago. Every time I go to Greece, I try to like learn new words and I have a little book and I do that. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I want to practice these X amount of words. I remember going to my sister Maria. I'm like, give me some good words, and because people give me very obscure ones, I'm like, no one's ever gonna. I'm never gonna ever say this in a sentence. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So my sister's like, oh, you know what's a good one? I'm like, what? She's like, about whatever that. I'm like, how often am I gonna really say forbidden? She's like, oh, Anthony, it's everywhere. I'm like, are yeah. you serious? I kid you, unless, if you, anyone that's been to Greece knows, it's on every sign, it's oh, on every it's corner, people, people love send saying me pictures. It. <laughs> yeah, Anytime like, they see a sign, they send a picture. There's a lot of territorial things going on. It's it's, it's thrown out so many times, yeah. it was hilarious how often I want to see how far this goes. Seen. I want to see if, like, Mitsotakis in a political conference, someone says about whatever, then someone chuckles. Well, someone <laughs> will send this at some point. Hey, so whatever. And it's funny how something like that, when you take something, and I think that's like, I think that's like a very true form of comedy. And I think that's why it resonates with so many people. You take something as simple as a word that's used over and over and over again. And it almost like plays like a song in your head. And you're like, wait, I can maybe make something out of this. And yeah. because of that, it's taken on its almost its own like direction in life force because people are like, I get it. Mm -hmm. Because we might not have all been to the same places, but everyone's been yelled about whatever there at Everybody. some point in Everybody. Greece or they've seen the, the countless signs. So mm -hmm. it, it's funny how... Just you being in tune, yeah. just kind of... And it was so simple. It was just two words, and the skits are easy to make. Well, what's the first word? Yep. 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 <laughs> uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's so easy to make. You go do something, yep. By whatever. We shot a couple. Oh, I know. I might shoot one tonight <laughs> after this. We should. And the ep part, I think, is the actual oomph, yeah, which, which I love. Yeah, it's the ep that makes yeah. it, because, like, that... Everyone, Startles you. Yeah. <laughs> I need. A, I'm gonna do one soon when someone drops it on me. I have it planned, so stay tuned. Stay tuned. Right? Putting it, it out there. It again. might be out by. Might be out by the time this goes. No, it won't be because I'm not the person I plan this one with. I'm not gonna see for a bit. So okay, fair enough. Um, in in doing whatever in in doing everything you've done over the the years, um, it's obviously brought on opportunity, and the opportunity is because you've um, continued to grow this. Yeah. As you grow it. You meet different people. Who's the who's the like the coolest person or most famous person you met because of this? All right, we'll start off with the coolest person. Coolest of that. All right. So this guy, uh, he he's got a patent for this product, and he creates these pocket squares. I know where this is going. That's it. And the, they stay up. They I, stay up. That was the perfect answer. We get. <laughs> 
He's talking about me, in case anyone doesn't follow this. And I appreciate that answer. That's correct. Most famous person? <laughs> uh, Yanni Santotokupo. Oh, you met Yanni. So I met him. He probably doesn't remember who I am. Uh, I met him. You might have seen your Pago Devte videos. He may have. Yeah. He may have. No, I met him because during our Greek heritage night in Boston. So, yeah, it's related to it because that's what got me into all this. Uh, we got to interview him uh, after the game. Um, my partner from that radio station at the time did the talking because my uh, he he's closer to his height. No, oh. he's like six three, and Yanni's like seven feet. Still so, not even that close. Yeah. And during the interview, Yanni looks down at me, and he, after talking all this Greek, he goes, "Oh, she said Elinas." And I'm like, "Yep." <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually say that? No, oh, I, I wish I you remember. did. This is years ago. This is years ago. You may have. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so, but, funny story about two years prior, I had court, not courts, I'd say, it's the seats behind the bench. We had four seats behind the bench, and we sat behind the box. It wasn't Greek carriage night or anything, but we had big flags, and we're yelling, we're giving Yanni the business the whole time, because we're Celtics fans, come on. And uh, we're, during the third or fourth quarter, we're like, Yanni, best messer, you gotta get back in there, your team sucks, this, this, and that. They need you, Yanni, Yanni. <laughs> He turns around during a timeout and he looks at me, he goes, Stamata Leo. And I'm like, okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so funny, like people oftentimes are like, ah, they can't hear us. They can't they have ears, yeah, they can yeah, hear you. Yeah. They Especially can hear if they hear it. Of course, then you really <laughs> just yeah. perk up. Uh, so you met, you talked about obviously Yanni, the most famous, the coolest person you met. Um, and all the a lot of the other um, I, I'd say perks that come along with having a social media account, and then there's the dark side, if you will, mm -hmm. and there's things that the dark side. the dark side it's it's things that you know might cripple some people or some people can't handle, and I want to know how you deal with it, mm -hmm. and that's in regards to negative comments or as it's more commonly known as trolls. How do you deal with negative comments? And trolls. When this, when I first started doing social media, it was difficult. Now, I am ecstatic when I see them. Really? Yes. Okay. I like them. Um, they don't offend me. Um, people can come in and say something witty or something trying to get under my skin. Doesn't happen anymore. I'm not saying that it did in the past, but I mean, you're, when you're new to the game, you're like, all right, why is this guy doing this? Or why, why is this person saying that? I didn't understand the game yet. Right. Um, but I look at it as, okay, we have these negative comments. What can we learn from them? Mm -hmm. Some might be trolls, but some might be a troll that doesn't know he's giving you great advice. Oof. So you might say, okay, he's making fun of this part or he's calling this part out or he's doing this. And then you just talk to your, your your inner group and you say, is this something that is an issue? Like, should we work on this part? And then you might say, okay, all right, maybe we, we should fix that. But it's not because of that, but it's because he, he did say that message. It might have opened your eyes to something. I'd say most of them are garbage, but some do have uh, relevance. So basically, like when you're digging through these comments, not that you're actively trying to, but sometimes you're digging through this dirt and you can actually take out little tiny nuggets of gold from time to time 100%. while tossing out the rest of the dirt. Yeah, no, 100%. No, I, I, you might think that I'm crazy in saying that, but I think I, they don't offend me. There's nothing anybody can say on social media that'll bring me down. Like, yeah, I can cripple you some days when someone offends you in some weird way or they're trying to get under your skin when my, you might know them. Like, they might not be someone that's close to you, and they might want to be smart. All right, that might bother you because you, you literally know the person. But if it's just an online troll, like, come on. Are we really going to ruin our day over an online troll? Right. But some people do. You know, no, some people... No, some people do, for sure. Right. Understandable. So I would say, so when I started Rare Cut, and I launched a Kickstarter, and it was, at that point, it was four years in the making, right? Yeah. You're, you know, you put all your eggs into one basket, and you're like, all right, now is showtime. And mm -hmm. we had a... You know, fortunately, we had a great campaign, a successful campaign. And as you advertise to people that you don't know, uh, you get these. Com I would see these comments like, "What is this unnecessary?" And and they would really like go get in there. And they, there were some really some, some comments. I'm like, "Who's who's taking the time 
to scour the web, find an advertisement, and then just like completely smash the product when they know it's a, it's a small business. It's yeah. just like, you also have to keep in mind, like, who's the type of person that does something like this? And once you kind of realize, like, all right, this person, it's a special person, yeah, let's just yeah, say, yeah. to yeah. do something like that, you're like, all right, you don't take it as badly. But also, I'll say, when you get these negative comments or these trolls, and we're in two very different industries, but maybe you can agree with this, maybe not. But in my experience is when I saw these trolls and people talking smack, I would respond back to them in like a polite way, mm -hmm. not in like a, a, a doormat way. I'd be a little sarcastic, a little funny, just oh, yeah, like the no, right temperature. Of course. Yeah, of course. But and then I, what I noticed is the, the next comment would be like, hey man, no, I was just saying, actually I think it's a really cool concept and a great product. Yeah, so a lot of yeah. times people just want attention. Right, and they right. Go at it in and a then if you way. respond, they can, they, then they act friendly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's so like For instance, helpful. like this, because but you get comments all the time. So you might get a, I've gotten a comment one time, someone was saying, uh, you should delete this video. And what you know what I said back? Hey man, I don't know what the delete button is, help me out. <laughs> He's, he disappeared. Just say never again, there you go. There <laughs> help you go. me do it, I don't yeah. know why, I, I'm trying to delete it, I don't know how to do it. We see the trouble Because once they realize, levels. okay, that didn't bother him, pff, they're gone. Right, exactly. Um, earlier in, in, the, in the interview, um, when you kind of describe like what's going on in your world, one of the things that you said that was near and dear to your heart was being a philanthropist. Mm -hmm. So, um, tell us more about that. Uh, it, tell you more in what way? Sorry. Yeah, you said that. So, like, you have you have the Greek brand, the Greece mm -hmm. brands, yep. rather. You run a, a charitable foundation. Yep. Um, the I know you have the Teddy K Classic. Uh, foundation, which is again near and dear to your heart. Um, what's that about? Uh, for those that might not know what that is, uh, so that is a memorial basketball tournament that I started for my dad back in two thousand and nine, and yeah, there are the, it's definitely philanthropy because what we do with the funds every year is we give out a scholarship to a student heading off to university. Um, so I've been doing that since two thousand nine, um, and philanthropy doesn't have to be necessarily handing out things; it can be being there for somebody. So I've also, for about a 10 year span, was the lead advisor at my, um, well, not the lead all 10 years, but the first few years, and then we had a bigger group and I took a less role, but um, in the youth program, um, philanthropy can be coaching, coaching basketball, because you're not coaching necessarily just for the win, you're developing people to become young adults. Uh, you're teaching them lessons on the court that they can take in the real world. Um, as far as Greece media, I mean, we try to do donations anytime we can when there's something happening in Greece. For instance, this past summer we had the wildfires, or um, they can be, we do a lot of work with the Hellenic Initiative, and they find families in crisis. Uh, it's one of their specialties in Greece, so we've tried to do some fundraising for that. So anytime there's an opportunity to, I, I just, I do genuinely like to get involved with that. And that's, and that's a little bit extra that I think, um, whether... And I know you're not even doing it for that reason, but again, you talked about just being genuine. And I think it's the little things like this that you don't have to do any of this, but you do. And I yeah. think it's just reflected into um, when somebody meets you or it comes across one of your accounts or watches one of your skits. Um, and they see that there's more than just meets the eye. It's not just a page. It's it, it's a movement. Yeah, it's no, it's a beyond. Whole, it's like, yeah, my pages are beyond pages. They're movements. Right. Uh, yeah, movements is a good word. I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And, and also... We're and here just, to make a difference. I love that. And and another thing that I love, too, I love the um, the the way that you honor your pops and, and the foundation uh, that, you, that you created in his name. I think that's really cool, man. It's a beautiful thing. So, um, Thank you. Uh, I know he'd be, he'd be proud. Um, so, is is there anything as far as, like, philo like, philanthropy goes? Is there anything that you have your sights set on that maybe you haven't... Um, gotten to check off the boxes yet? Is there is like next steps or is that still to be determined? It still doesn't be, de be determined. Uh, it's something that I just kind of take as I go. Like I'm not going to say oh, this is what I want to if some, an opportunity comes up and we can help then we'll be there. So it, I, I don't like to script things out so a situation comes up and if we can sell a product that can help raise funds for it then oh we also did work with um Yamas, that's right. Yeah. With Christina, and we teamed up with uh, Aegean Rebreath in Greece, and they're a, a nonprofit that 
base, literally goes out. They built infrastructure around Greece to help with the plastic problem. They sent people into the sea to clean it, and we just try to do our part. Nothing major. We produced a, a reusable cup. You can find it on my website, greasemedia.com, grease-media.com, or just go to my Instagram bio. Um, and the, the entire proceeds, all net, goes to Chain Rebreath. Wow. And it's still on sale right now. But they're still on sale. They're, they're still available. <laughs> go to grease-media.com or go to yamas.com. Um, they're available on both sites, but both go to the exact same checkout point. And uh, Christina did a great job of organizing that. She, yeah, she vetted did. a Gene Rebreath, got got to know them. She she put in most of the work on this. I got to give her credit on that. Cool. I had to get that plug in one more time. Yeah. I had to. So I just have a few more questions on business, then we're going to uh, transition to something else. So... Um, because you are multi-dimensional, what else are you concentrating on uh, outside of Grease Media? I try to find any opportunity to create. I mean, I mean, I've always been around business, uh, so I if there's an opportunity to create a new entity or a new revenue flow or a new this or I, I enjoy it because. It's not, and it's not just for the money. It's because if I can accomplish something, and then it's like getting a win. Mm-hmm. And I like getting W's. I, I like that man. W's. So, kind of business oriented. I know that you dabble in a lot of different things. You're trying to, you know, you, you different keep, markets. You keep your ear to the street, as they say. You really yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And and I know one thing that's been. Um, uh, uh, something that you've been monitoring and also something that you believe in Mm -hmm. is crypto. So I have some questions in a nutshell about crypto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not financial advice. (laughs) Legal disclaimer. Not financial advice. Not me neither. Not financial advice. These are just opinions and questions. Do you think crypto is a future? Uh, And out of crypto, are there certain coins that you think are more valuable or interesting than others. All right, this escalated quickly. Uh, <laughs> uh, what should I but buy? But to answer your question, I do. I have pivoted more than just some real estate. I do like playing in the stock market and cryptos have become pretty big. I recently had two of my episodes of my podcast. One was with a blockchain expert, so there's clearly an, an interest. And then recently, I had an episode on investing with an investing reporter, and we mm-hmm. we touched on crypto. Um, I I do. Play in the crypto world. Yep. Um, I think it's definitely the future, I, and I just say that because I hear that everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> we've been brainwashed. Yeah, we've been brainwashed. <laughs> um, it's gonna take time, but I think it's definitely a technology that isn't going anywhere, and it's probably when web. I guess they call it Web three now. Yes, that's what it's I coming. Just learned that the other day. Yeah. When Web three is here. Everything is going to run off cryptocurrencies. There you go. Everything. Like you'll be logging in with your crypto wallet, not your passwords anymore. Right. And to do, and there's going to be a tons of coins, and the big guy is always going to be on top. Bitcoin. Facts. Bitcoin's going yep. to be on top. So, last question that I have for you is you know, people save with oftentimes with a bigger picture in mind. Um, and I know you dabble with crypto. When would you feel okay selling your crypto? Uh, never. Never. Yeah, because there's gonna be new ways that you can you you can in the future. So you can use your crypto basically. This is not financial advice. You can use your <laughs> crypto to gain very big interest. Mm-hmm. Banks give out what point zero one. There's ways you can get eight to ten percent of your crypto, but mm-hmm. this isn't a financial conversation, so Is I'm this not going to talk. Advice? We're not going to talk much about that. But the reason I say I'm not going to because there's going to be programs now where if you have a Bitcoin and Bitcoin hits a million dollars, hits five hundred thousand dollars, you can just take a loan out on it. Right. It's like having a house. Right. Soon Bitcoin's going to surpass property. Right. So you have a million, two million dollars. You have a million dollars in Bitcoin, and you need two hundred fifty thousand. You're going to get that on a low rate. So why sell it if it's only going to grow? I'll sell the altcoins. 
Yeah, those I can understand. But so you're Doge just, can go. Yeah, no, I agree. At some point, that's gotta go. But yeah. Doge so forever. <laughs> <laughs> so you're more of a buy and hold strategist. I'm a hoarder like, by nature, so yeah. it's tough for me to sell it. Understood. Even right. when I, I see it, it. taken, I can't get rid of it. No, <laughs> you never more. sell when it's red. You never sell when it's red. So those are the questions that I had. Now you actually did something recently on Instagram mm. where you asked. Um, your uh, Instagram followers to submit questions and as someone like yourself who's very involved with their community and the audience yeah. you I know you take their suggestions uh, recommendations and their questions very seriously I do so uh, we compiled a list of a few questions um, about you that so is this uh, part two of the discussion this is kind of like part two All this right. is like the sequel almost but we're not right. cutting tape or anything or so can I stretch my legs we don't have time for that. Uh, I'm sorry. We have to get to the questions. Well, let's we get have to, the to get to the questions. Let's get to the questions. We have some uh, some questions that were submitted by people who follow your Instagram. And yeah. one thing that you've been known to do is uh, have a very large involvement from your audience. Yeah. So we compiled a list of questions uh, from your audience that people want to know. Sure. That yeah, yeah this is fun. Let's do that. So, yeah, they kind of go, they span across just more about like who you are, mm-hmm. uh, Greece, of course. And then we have the, uh, uh, we put a section of just random questions. Love so, we have it. a few. Ready to spitfire these? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Let's, let's go. Let's fire. All right, first question What work do you do? What work do you do to be able to work remotely? Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? <laughs> Um, well, I mean, we talked about this a bit, content creation, uh, bringing, offering services for Greek tourism. Um, I, those are things that I don't necessarily need to be in a desk inside mm-hmm. a building, printing things out. So a laptop, my phone, my cameras, and I can do that stuff. So it might look like I'm just running around, but it's working remotely. This one's a two-parter. Mm-hmm. How did you get in the travel industry? What do you do? People are very curious to know what you do. <laughs> I got into the travel industry because I love Greece. I love island hopping. Uh, I like taking pictures. I love shooting videos. So I think that's a good way to promote our beautiful country. Next question. What do you do? No, that's not the next question. <laughs> <laughs> what people want to know. Uh, how do you keep up with work back home, back in the U.S.? Uh, most of the time between the real estate I do and everything else, most of it I can handle remotely. I could stay in Greece a bit longer, but I do like being around family, friends, and you miss that after a while. Mm-hmm. So that's what really pulls me back. I do like and really, really still enjoy the, the coaching that I do in basketball. So I love that. And it's not something I want to just drop yet. Gotcha. This is a good question, actually. What's the best way to buy a house in Greece? So the best way to buy a house in Greece is to go to a site called theprosperity.com. And this is this might sound like an ad, but it's not. Not an ad. Not an ad. <laughs> not an ad. Not an ad. Um, no, they're a really great company. I got to know them. They've been on the podcast. The CEO's been on the podcast. Um, they're helping me try to find a place in Greece. They just came out with a new service where they launched online auctions. Okay. Or, sorry, I'm not sure if it's online auctions. I need to proof that. But they at least offer the listings for auctions in Greece. That much for sure. i got to double check on the if they're online or not. Um, but they're building a really, really great product. You log online, virtually tour a home. And they even have a service now. If you're not in, live in Greece or even Greek, you can apply for a mortgage living in the U.S. Wow. In, with a Greek bank. And I think they're handing some money out. So if you're looking for a house, now is now now is the time. Go to theprosperty.com. We'll put the link in the in the show notes. But uh, yeah, their sites you can do everything online. So after you get your house from theprosperty.com, yeah, would you, you don't, yeah, would you live there year round? I wouldn't live there year round. I'm not. I can't commit 12 months to Greece. Uh, but I can, I definitely do want to get a place. And I know a lot of my followers have been following my tours and they know that I've been home shopping. Uh, I unfortunately didn't make a decision yet. I know you guys are like, make, make up your mind right so we can stop seeing these posts. But uh, I haven't decided yet. It will happen at some point. It'll probably be the mainland, maybe somewhere like southern Athens. 
Because if you're on an island, it's great and all, but then you're stuck on that island. But if you're in somewhere like southern Athens, you're 15 minutes from the seaport, you're 25 minutes from the airport, you can go anywhere you want. And southern Athens feels like an island. Mm. Who are your favorite Instagrammers? Who are my favorite Instagrammers? These are the questions. Uh, at Greece, at I am Greece, at Hoopla Greeks. <laughs> and at Self promotion. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. No, there's there's a lot of great there's a lot of great pages. Um, I can't pick a favorite. There's so many. Is, Everyone, is there like a celebrity that you follow? A musician, an artist, uh, an entrepreneur, maybe? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm gonna think of one. Can we come back to that so I can think about yeah, one? We'll but back to it. but as far as like the, the Greek, there's a lot of great Greek pages. I gotta throw that out there. It's, it's grown. The community in the Greek Instagram has grown a lot the last few years, and I personally love it. Um, but as far as my favorite Instagrammer, we gotta come back to that. Okay. Uh, another question that I love. Do you work when you're in Greece? Yes. Yes. Yes, he does. I seen it. I seen it. He seen it. I seen it. Uh, I. <laughs> it's not a question. This is more of a statement, and it is, <laughs> it is. I saw you walking through Athens. I was too nervous to say something. Say something next. Time. You see something? Say something. You see Tony? Say you something. You see me? Come say hi. I will not bite. And you see Tony say, yep. Yeah, it was probably because of the yep or whatever. I get it. It probably went was. everywhere. Uh, but we did get, a few people did come up to us. It was pretty cool. Walking through Monastiraki and someone just like kind of walked up super nervous, pointed his phone. It was like, um, you're like, you're the guy, right? I'm like, what guy? Like, are you you're Greek? I'm like, yeah, I'm Greek. I think what he was trying to say is, are you like from, because he probably sees I am Greece. Oh, so he's right, like, are right, you right. Like, I'm like, he goes, I'm like, are you talking about TikTok? He goes, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this one? And he goes, oh, that's, oh that's you, yes. Can we get a picture? That's awesome. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I didn't say Papa whatever did. But he goes, you got to give us what we want. We keep keep the Papa whatever that's coming. I'm like, I'll do that. But I, I'll only give you the picture if you say Papa whatever on camera. And he did it for me. That's a fair exchange. Yeah, in my pretty opinion. fair exchange. But yeah, so if you see us, me or Maria or Anthony, come say hi. Uh, what's your favorite thing about Greek culture? The lifestyle. Ooh. Hands down. I go, mean, go more into that. No, I will. I will. I mean, living there and living here is so different. Um, it's there's a mod. I don't know if it's a modern expression or saying. In in the states, we live to work. Where there we work to live. Mm. So they work enough to live a comfortable life. Where I'm not saying like working a ton and building this empire is bad. But you gotta balance your life so you can enjoy it along the way, and that's why I think Greeks people get they get attacked a lot for finances. But I still haven't ever seen one. I mean, there are some that are going through crisis, but a lot of the people that I know in Greece that are not financially well off, they're still happy. Right. They I've never seen them complain about money. They only complain in like a fun way. Ah, my You're right. But, yeah. Right. But they never upset. They're still happy. They have their family. They have the beach nearby. They have their afternoon cafe. They got the pare coming by every day. They got the thea walk, walking down. Buy me a cafe. <laughs> and a cafe. <laughs> we all have that thea. Yeah. Not many of them. And at the end of the day, they had a fulfilling day. So it's interesting that you would say, you say that because you're also someone that puts in a ton of work in the day. So you do, like you mentioned earlier, you work 16-hour days. Do you happen to think that's the American part about you? Probably. Hmm. Probably. But I also know that this type of work, running social media is the 24-hour jobs because somewhere in the world it's 5 p.m. Not everyone's asleep when you're going to bed. Right. So <laughs> there's been times where we'll go to like a, a family dinner or go to meet a friend's friend or friend or we're going to have coffee somewhere and the phone's buzzing and you you know you're not supposed to pull it out because it's the biggest sign of disrespect if you're going to be looking at your phone in front of a pare, right? And none of them have their phones out. But you're like, oh my God, this is... And then you got to gauge it. How urgent is it? Nah, it's not right. that urgent. But sometimes it's super urgent and I don't want to be the guy like, I got to do this. I, I got to do this. It's, it's tough. There especially, are times where it's tough. Especially times too when like, you're hanging out with somebody and and, and when you want to like be present and right you want to yeah it's you want to be present and i know they say keep the phone away okay but there could be a situation like i'm also a landlord i get a call saying the roof collapsed hmm. right 
So, and or you could be you could be an investor. And it was September, early September, where there was a crypto crash of forty percent. And I had my phone out, and it was me and Maria and my cousin and his wife. And I went silent. I'm like, I'm looking at my phone. It's like dropping like a like a rock. And I'm like, and Maria's like, what's wrong? I'm like, nothing. But like, I knew it was gonna recover. But in that moment, we're just, all right, we're trained to like fear for the worst. Anytime you lose money, it's it's not. Yeah, a fun and thing. I'm like, oh my look, crypto just crashed by forty percent. Act normal. <laughs> and she's like, so she gets it because she like she enjoys the financial world too. She's like, oh, that sucks. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> and now it's back. Yeah. 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 Right, now so. it's back. Yeah. This, Buy the dip. Yeah, should have bought the dip. Uh, Buy the dip. No, not financial advice. <laughs> uh, this is a good one as well. Very on brand. What are your favorite islands? This is the most difficult question because everyone gives me this one. But all right, I'll give you a few. Mm-hmm. I love Milos. I love Zakynthos. I love Paros. I love Kalinos. Uh, I've grown to love Santorini. Uh, there's a side of Santorini that's not hotels and volcanoes. That is rich of tradition and culture and you can if you've only gone to Santorini and gone to Ia or the Mirovigli and just saw the the famous stuff there's another side that you can do an entire trip on and that's what we did this year and I grew to love Santorini because of that. Falangelos is beautiful very small um not, I mean Mykonos is nice looking like Mykonos town's nice but I, I'm not crazy to go back all the time. But is, isn't there another part of Mykonos that's, that might have what Santorini has that you just mentioned? I think there is. I haven't just explored it enough Got yet. It. So I'm not going to sit here and bash it. Like, Mykonos is nice. Mykonos town is very beautiful. Mm-hmm. It really is. Uh, but, like, obviously a lot of the people go for the beach parties and I've kind of, I don't know, want to say I like group past because I'm not that old. But <laughs> I don't care as much. Uh, but I believe the island's like this big on the map, and everyone's like in this little corner. It's like New York City compared to New York. Right. It's, it's what right. it's like. Okay. So there's there is probably a lot more. I just haven't. There's some really clear waters. Mikos is clear waters. Gotcha. Lefkada, Kefalonia, insane blue waters. Blue that it does not exist in the Aegean. No matter what anyone tells you, oh, I've seen blue like this. No, you haven't. You probably filtered your photo. Don't filter your photos. <laughs> uh, I don't. This is a great question. Um, I might have submitted this, actually I didn't, but this is what I want to know as well. Yeah. This has been on my mind heavy uh, since this summer, really, is how can someone get their citizenship? If they qualify, mm-hmm. go to my website, grease-media.com, apply for your citizenship application. Fair enough. Simple as that, right? We offer that service. Uh, we teamed up with a firm that specializes in this, and what they do is if you qualify, they're going to do the entire process for you. They're going to get it done because you might you might have tried and you might have got stuck up somewhere. The consulate might not have called you back and then two years went by and you forgot about it or they forgot about you. They got the ins with all the consulates. You apply with them. They give you a price quote. They tell you this will take from six months to two years. They'll probably give you a pretty good range and you decide. And then all you have to do is just provide the few documents she's going to ask you, and they're going to do all the filings, all this, all, all the digging. And uh, you can apply. You can submit for a request on our website. We then connect you with them, and they take care of it for you. Of all the people that I know from the U.S. that got their Greek citizenship, not one person has ever been like, yeah, it wasn't bad. It's, there's always a horror story involved, time-consuming, oh, oh, paperwork. A few reward. friends that applied, they're like, I've been waiting for four years. Yeah. You, you're guaranteeing it. I'm not guaranteeing nothing, but they're going to get it done. Yeah, I remember being a kid and just waiting outside like these buildings because my parents went in to the consulate and just it was torturous as a kid waiting there. So if you love your kids and you're in Greece with them, do not bring them to the consulate <laughs> building. Just go to this website. That, that's honestly good to know because it's something yeah. I'm looking to get on as well. Uh, all right. We have some questions about Greece. Hit me. Wait, okay. Oh, okay. When you're on tour... Are you shooting content for clients or for yourself? Uh, both. Both. I shoot a lot, obviously, for myself, but some people may not pick up on it. Some people do if they read all the, the quotes, the captions. There, I. So we do some shooting where we provide the client their content. We've done that with some villas. We've done that with some companies. What we also do is we promote 
whether it's hotels, companies, brands, but we do it in a super, like I am not a traditional advertiser. I try to do things organically. So mm-hmm. like if it's a product, I'm going to make it look like we're using it and they'll be tagged and in the caption somewhere they'll be discussed. Um, so yeah, I, I we do shoot for clients and we do shoot for myself. Clients is usually promotional type photography or promotional services. Okay. Um, what's the best time to visit Greece? Whenever you can go. Mm, great answer. Uh, how much does the vocabulary change, island to island? Ah, uh, it, it's significant. There's some there's some slang in like. In the other Canese, there's some slang. The North has a different slang. They, hell, in the North, they, they, they piss off a lot of Instagrammers when they put ketchup and mustard in their gyros. <laughs> or should I say gyros and get everyone all rattled up? That's another yeah. debatable topic. Um, do you feel the history and the magnitude of historic events as you photo through Greece? Uh, sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, there's obviously the ruins. The, vo- the volcanoes and uh, the history, the museums. Yeah, so, I, I, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, what's the best island in Greece in terms of sea fun clubs and culture history? So they're trying to, it sounds like they're trying to get... They want everything in one. Yeah, they want yeah, yeah. it. Baros. Baros. Baros cool. has it all. Cool. And, and and what stands out the most about Baros to you? Uh, I mean, they have, it's a big island, so you don't feel like you're, no cabin fever is going on. You have Nausa, which is like the, the photogenic harbor. You got the nightlife there. You got beaches there. Um, then you have a few other villages slash towns. You can tr- go on day drives and feel like you're in a big island. Uh, the nightlife is pretty good in Nausa. The beaches are nice. It's got everything you want to ask for. It's got some history. Yeah, it's got it all. Cool. Good to know. Uh, does it require a lot of money to travel to Greece? No. I mean, depends. It depends on who you are. I mean, if you're someone that likes spending money, yes, Greece is very expensive. <laughs> if you know how to get by and be a frugal human being, it's very cheap in Greece. Very relative to yeah. the kind of trip it's, you want to have. Yeah, it I comes agree. down to, you I can agree. go to Mikro, all right, Mikro Santorini have non-Greece pricing. Facts. Everywhere else has reasonable pricing, but if you like spending money, you will spend a lot of money. Or if you know that all right, this two euro gyro, oh, gyro. Pissing people off. Uh, if the, if you if two euro euro gets you by for lunch, then you just got by with lunch for two euros. Or in Mykonos, you might buy a plate that's going to run you eighteen euros. So, right. But that that can also happen in Athens. This section is our final section, and oh. we put them into miscellaneous. Oh, okay. So it's going to be a little bit all, right, all over the place. All right, we're throwing darts. Let's do it. Uh, the comment and question is, I love all your photos. Do you shoot with a camera or your phone? I shoot both. I shoot with an iPhone. I shoot with a DSLR. I shoot with a, with a um, drone. I shoot with an FPV drone, which is a new type of drone that uh, you've seen it. Flies around the somersaults. I bought it right after I saw you. You bought the FPV? No, you um, bought the Air. Yeah, I, I bought a drone. You bought the drone. Right a this drone. drone only points forward and does like somersaults and flips. So you can do like, it's mainly for videos. It's like just for mainly for video. I don't use it for photography. Got it. My other drone is for photography. Uh, I have a stabilizer for my phone for video. I have a stabilizer camera, like the Osmos from DJI. I have a bunch of tools. Most of the stuff you see on my Instagram is in my iPhone. Which is shocking, and that's the truth. And I was, I expect you to have, and you do have, you have all the gear. Yeah. But none of it gets to the Instagram quick enough because right. pulling out the memory cards and getting on your computer and editing them. It's a lot of busy work. Especially when you're on, tr- on a trip. Yeah. My DSLR has now become just the film, just the camera for Naked series. It's all I use it for. My phone is for the pictures I take along the way. My DJ Osmo or D- DJI Pocket is when I'm like running around and want to get quick videos while we're moving or underwater videos in the drones when I need to get up high. Right. You're taking some pretty incredible drone pictures. So that's... Well, you got a nice one to use. Yes, so. I was, think that's what he was getting at. Yeah, that's what he was it's, getting at. If, yeah, if once you get a good picture on a drone, I feel like you're sold. Yeah. You want one. Uh, next question is, where is the best traditional Greek food in Athens? Doesn't exist. 
<laughs> Is that how we're leaving it? <laughs> uh, I'm like the biggest hater when it comes to food in Athens. So like, this is a tough question. I I run into tourist trap after tourist trap in Athens. Okay. You it's, can't catch a break. I can't catch a break. Everyone's like, go to this place. Go to that. Oh, I can't. Yeah. I can't go to this. <laughs> There's one place in Montsilaki that I like, Savas. They got good gyro and souvlaki, but they're not a sit down place. Um, if you want, this goes with everywhere in Greece. If you want genuine good Greek food, get off the beaten path. Get on, yeah, get off the beaten off. path. Yeah, go find somewhere that's like. In CD, there's some good place. So yeah, in Athens, walk around CD, and you, there's a few little restaurants that you can tell are run by like a couple people. Go in there, go yeah. find good food. Next question: What is the best app for learn how to speak Greek? Best app? How was phrased? I don't know. I haven't really used one. I know there's a company. I mean, this is free advertising. So congratulations. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll cut it out in yeah. post editing. I don't I don't know them. I don't know them personally, but I think it's called LOL. Okay. Learn on learning online language something. Uh, That's what LOL stands for. <laughs> yeah, I have right. no idea. But uh, I think they teach Greek language, and there's a few other teachers. Like it's it's changed now. Where like there's Instagrammers that will sell you their service to teach you Greek. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's obviously the traditional. I'm not going to give the, the the big yellow box of advertisement. They're big enough. Fair think, enough. They're yeah, good. Yeah. Um, there's a. But if you want, no, nah, I can't go there. There was the skits that uh, our friend Yanni Bravo does now. We learn Greek with Yanni Bravo. There you those? go. That's yeah. a way to learn. Yeah. Don't actually use what he says out loud. <laughs> I would just uh, chime in here and say that um, you know. Duolingo is a really good one too, especially okay. if you know how to speak a little bit of Greek. Like if you have some familiarity with the language, sure, it's really good. I don't know if it'd be as as useful if uh, the camera does not want to work with us. Doesn't. Uh, I don't know if it'd be as useful if you didn't if you went into it cold and didn't know any Greek. I can't speak to that, but mm-hmm. if you speak Greek and you want to improve, um, Duolingo is a really good app too. Mm. Let's see. All right. Show us places to get married in Greece. It's not even a question. Just do it. <laughs> I haven't been married yet. How am I supposed to come up with this answer? All right. Just do it. All right. Go textbook, Sadorini. There you go. My friend just got married there. So, mm. there you go. M- Milos is known for engagements. And they say in Milos, if you go as a couple and you guys are just in a related friendship, like boyfriend, girlfriend, or I shouldn't say just boyfriend, girlfriend. if you're just a couple, mm-hmm. um, if you leave and you're not engaged, you break up. What? That's, what oh, that's they wild. Yeah. They say uh, Milos is for lovers. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Wait, if you go there and you don't get engaged on the island, yeah. you're done. That's, that's what, what they say. Saying. And that's why a lot of this pressure. summer I wanted to go to Milos, but Maria was too scared. Oh, wow. <laughs> she, she figured I'm not going to do that yet. Oh, okay. So we can't leave Milos. Listen, she wants to stay true to the traditions. Understood. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, speaking, we'll continue on, uh, on the topic of romance here. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the most romantic island? I guess Sandorini and Milos. Yeah. yeah. Same answer. Okay. Same answer. That works. What was Mikonos. The f- Mikonos raves. <laughs> what was the phone you use underwater? Um, that was uh, about a year ago. This year, I didn't dip my phone underwater because someone told me that the waterproof iPhones, hers ruined. So I got scared. I'm like, I don't want to risk it. Yeesh. But these are waterproof now. The iPhone 11s and iPhone 12 Pros are waterproof. To a certain depth. Yeah, yeah. All right. We're not going under six meters. Speak for yourself, bro. (laughs) I got you. Scuba dive over here. No, I tread water for like two minutes. (laughs) (laughs) But um, yeah, that that one was an iPhone 11 Pro. The iPhone 12 Pro I didn't dip. Okay. The 11 Pro, I was swimming with it. Did pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty deep. All right. Three more questions. What's the best? And this is a good one because... I know that I've asked this question before in the past, and, and people that travel uh, to Greece ask this. What's the best mobile data solution when traveling to Greece for at least a month? All right, so if it's summer, there's amazing deals. So I just found out that they're only going on in the summer. Because uh, I was like, if it's this cheap, like, you can get by so cheap in Greece. Mm-hmm. With, for 10 euros in the summer this year, they had unlimited data in like a few minutes for phone calls, but you don't need to make phone You can make phone calls over, over data now. So they have unlimited data for 10 euros a month. So you can then, if you have to work on your laptop, have your phone as your hotspot, right? and you have unlimited data for 10 euros a month. 
Ten. That's what you pay a day with Verizon. So you turn on your international. Yes. Yeah. It's ten dollars a day. Yeah. So okay, well, it's a world of difference. Mm-hmm. All right, two more questions. Uh, can I join you, or how can I join you? <laughs> Go to my website and. <laughs> uh, we're not hiring right now, but when we do, I'll put it out there, and you can go to my website. So you said hiring, and the last question is: Do you need an intern? Soon, not yet, but I might soon. Okay, all right, cool. Um, so that wraps up the questions that we got here. I uh, just want to say at this point, is there anything else that you'd like to say, anything on your mind, anything we haven't covered that you'd like to address? No, I think we covered pretty much everything. Oh, yeah. You did a great job. Thank you. Of course, man. It was a pleasure the, to be Yeah, here. the questions are great. Um, the questions the fans submitted, super. Yes. Um, yeah. No, I, I look, I like what I do, and I think that's what matters for everybody. If you like what you do and stick with it, be passionate about it and don't be afraid to let your passion spill out. You deal with what people think. Right. And it's very evident what you just said about caring, having fun with what you do, yeah. and that's what makes the Grease brands very special. And, you know, I, I speak for, I'm sure for everyone listening that we're very excited to see what's in store for the future and the next steps that you, uh, you're working on currently. So I uh, can't wait to see what's in, in store for the future. I'm excited. I'm excited. And likewise to you. I'm excited to see what you got coming up. Awesome. But, um, Thank you. If anyone's been watching and they've been looking at the show the entire time, I was. Go to my I website. I can get my eyes off it. And you can get the end of the new about whatever. It comes in a hoodie, in a sweater too, and t shirts. And multiple colors, if I'm not mistaken. And you know where proceeds are going on this Where's one? Where's that? Straight to my pocket. Ooh, These are not for charity. Like <laughs> We've done a lot of it. You've done a lot of donating. So. Um, no, I'm just teasing. I mean, yeah, but it's not a, it's not a charitable thing, but hey. It's a movement that we're working with, uh, and if the, for those in Greece watching that have been stuck saying it, keep saying it. <laughs> yep. Well, Tony, thank you so much for having me, man. It was a pleasure. Oh, that Appreciate was weak. That was weak. Oh, there you go. All right, there man. You go, man. Thank you. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you guys for listening to this special edition Very episode special. of Grease Chats, hosted by... Not Tony Carriotis. This mm-hmm. one was hosted by Anthony Orissas, founder of Rare Cut. I got to give him a plug. <laughs> Go to at Rare Cut on social media. Go to rarecut.com. He, he, plug it, plug it. Come on. Plug it. All right. No, I'll plug, plug it. I'll plug. Since plug we're it. here, since we're here. <laughs> plug it. Yeah, no, thank you. So basically, what we've done is we have a, um, it's a company that I founded. Concept was about five years ago. Uh, born and raised in Queens, and that's where our business is based out of is Queens, New York, Astoria, Queens, to be specific. And basically, it started with me inventing a pocket square that no matter how you bend, twist, or fold it, it retains its shape. When you put it in your pocket, it stays up. Stays up. That is our tagline. We certainly have fun with the marketing and the tagline of that. It uh, makes a great gift for the holidays as well. And one thing that we've been doing is we are also expanding into a lifestyle brand. So my thing, very similar to what Tony was saying earlier, was I never just wanted to get into something just to for the sake of, of having, saying, hey, I can hang my hat on just having this product or or whatever. I, I was always thinking bigger picture, and my thing was always to have uh, not just a company with a product, but a brand with a purpose. And that's uh, what we're doing with Rare Cut. Um, we expanded our line into T-shirts, and we will be expanding into more. But one thing that we uh, are really passionate about is um, we got into uh, some different campaigns. One was Shop Local for telling the stories and sharing the stories of local business owners through the pandemic. We just did one for breast cancer awareness uh, and share the journeys and stories of the women that go through that. And that's just the start of it. So we're, we're really pumped to grow this brand into what I know it can be. And um, yeah, for any entrepreneur listening, um, Tony talked a lot about it earlier, the ups and downs and you know, it's not an overnight thing. And I know that I still have my work cut out for me, but the fun is in the growth and the growth is, is in the journey. So just, Keep it in mind to enjoy that journey and have fun every step of the way. Man, well said. But before we let you go, we do have to quickly plug our sponsor, our podcast sponsor. Um, it's Prosperty. And I know we talked about Prosperty earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had them on the show. And what they're building, I truly think, is a great product for people that are like real estate, want to move to Greece, want to get a property in Greece. And it's not just buying property. You, know, you can rent property with them. 
Uh, you can find auctions, you can sell your property, you can buy a property. And like I said, you go to the website, the entire process, 3D virtual walkthroughs, applications for your mortgage, you submit your offers, counter offers, all of it's done on the website. The only thing you literally do in person is pick up the key. Whew. That's like yeah. damn good, no. damn so, good concept. So they're called Prosperty. Their website is theprosperty.com. The link's in the bio, in the show's notes. And on Instagram, they're at Prosperty underscore real estate. So that is Prosperty Real Estate, official sponsor of Grease Chats. Before I let you go, thank you once again, Anthony. And thank pleasure. you, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you in Greece. Sounds damn good. Bye, whatever. Bye, hit. Yeah, after Epi Trepet. Epi Trepet. Talk to you guys again soon.